So what's next now for the Atlanta Falcons? What what do we do now? Okay. So looking at some of the players that are available, I still think that corner is very much in play. Now, Joey Porter Jr., who a lot of us thought that would go in the first round of the draft, he's still out there. My guy, Cam Smith, he's still out there. Um, Tyreek Stevenson is still out there from Miami. Julius Bre- uh, Brents from Kansas State, He's still out there. So I do think that there's a good deep class of corners that's available in the second round. If we want to go to the edge side of things, if we're, if we're looking at edge player, listen, if I could get my hands on at 44, if I could get my hands on Keon white, I'll be a lot happier. I'll, I'll even, I'll even give you a big smile out here. If I can get my hands on Keon white, because you know how I feel about Keon white. I love his game. I love his upside. Big, strong, fast, physical. I, I think that he think that he could be a really good player in the NFL moving forward. And if you if you have a guy like <clears throat> Calais Campbell, who's a bigger defensive edge player, working with a Dion or with a Keon White, I should say, I, I think he could be a big influence on him and he could certainly learn some things from him. So at, at least there is possibly and again obviously they pick 44 in here there's possibly some decent edge players Keanu Benton is another guy defensive tackle playing on the inside if the Falcons are going to go that route um Osiris Torrance is an interesting guy who can play sort of center guard if you're going to look that route so I think for the positions that and again we might go wide receiver tight end in the second round because that's what we do right but when you look at some of the things that certainly could help the Falcons in this draft, corner has still guys that are available. There's there's several corners that should be there at 44, at least one of those guys. Maybe Joey Porter Jr. <coughs> won't be there at 44, but again, Cam Smith or somebody could be. There are some edge players. You started to see a little bit of a run on some of the edge guys a little bit later in the draft, but... Certainly, if Keon White could fall, I, I would I would love to get my hands on for the Atlanta Falcons, Keon White. We talk about having these local kids and things like that. Well, here's a kid who played at Georgia Tech, and we're so worried about the logo on the side of the helmet. Here's a guy that played at Georgia Tech, and I, I'm going back to the Bijan thing. You know, obviously, we passed on Jalen Carter in this whole thing. Um, you know, I, you could argue maybe he was the best player in the draft, so... Again, we don't necessarily know what the Falcons direction wise are going to go. Um, <clears throat> the other position that uh, that I was looking at, obviously, I in my mock draft. <clears throat> oh, Keely Ringo is another guy who's who's out there and potentially available. I wouldn't mind that. I wouldn't mind having Keely Ringo. So I think cornerback, I think edge players in play. Um, I, I certainly think that. And, and again, after drafting a running back, I certainly think that wide receiver is somewhat in play there weren't a lot of wide receivers that were drafted in the first round of the draft Addison you know the kid from Boston College there weren't a lot of weren't a lot of players that were selected to that position that are that were in the first round so certainly you would think that maybe a Jalen Hyatt I've said Cedric Tillman those guys could all be available there uh, Jonathan Mingo is another guy that could be available. Jaden Reed is another guy that could be available. So I think that those are all high caliber guys. But if I'm looking at probably where the Falcons go next, my gut told me that they would go with cornerback at number eight. And you saw Christian Gonzalez fell to like <clears throat> 17, I believe it was. You know, Devin Witherspoon was the first corner taken off the board. I would have liked to have had him. But you saw Gonzalez was drafted a little bit later. They It looked like that in the first round that guys didn't value corner as much as maybe what we thought they would because we thought that Witherspoon, Gonzalez would be high draft picks. Joey Porter Jr. would be a guy that would be drafted. Um, the kid out of Maryland, I know he went in the first round, but that was another guy that was being looked at for his first-round talent. So there is some really good talent. When you talk about Ringo and Joey Porter Jr., and Cam Smith that all are capable second round players. And some of those guys might even have first round grades on them. So I do think that corner is very much in play, obviously with getting rid of Casey Hayward, 
you know, you you can't have too many corners, as my friend D Led says. And obviously, you know, we don't know necessarily about Jeff Okuda. What's he going to be like? So having a young corner that you don't have to worry about for the next four or five years, you know, certainly, you know, four years, certainly is is not a bad option to have. <clears throat> Okuda is a one-year guy. So as of right now, uh, most likely they will not pick up his fifth-year option. He's a one-year, he's a one-year player. So Again, we don't know what the future of Jeff Okuda is going to be. And my cues is, you know, maybe slot corner, things like that. So I, I'm focused in on cornerback that Joey Porter Jr., Keely Ringo, Cam Smith, those are all guys that are sitting there available to draft. It feels like in this second round of the draft, there's a good bit of cornerbacks that are available that we maybe thought would be first round picks. A lot of them fell to the second round. So there should be a plethora of, of cornerbacks for the Falcons to pick coming up at 44. We'll see what they go. Again, they may draft another tight end when all is said and done. They may draft Darnell Washington when all is said and done. So I don't know what this regime is going to do. I don't really have my hands um, in the in the you know in the pie to figure out what they're going to do, but we will see. But it will be an interesting second and third round. I'm going to be up at Flowery Branch tonight and i'll have uh, you know coverage on the radio for all of it but we'll see what happens with uh, with the second round but i do think corner is the most likely pick to happen for the falcons in the second round all right we thank you uh for making hit and hard every day um as your first listen listen we want you to leave us a comment when you do listen into the show and let us know that you're an everyday listener to the program. So we thank you so much for being an everydayer, as we like to call them. So we thank you so much for listening in every day to the program. Hit and Hard is available on all your favorite podcast platforms. And certainly give us a comment that you do listen in every single day to us.